while working on a series about building things, making the tools necessary to build them, it's easy to focus on the transition from stone to bronze tools being one of the first major changes of significance. But this overlooks the much more revolutionary change that preceded it and made it possible in the first place, the Neolithic Revolution, the transition of humanity from hunting and gathering society to sedentary agricultural civilizations. In human history, 96% of it occurs in this pre-agrarian Paleolithic era. But in terms of human population, 88% of all humans lived after it. Starting around 10,000 BCE, several areas of the world, independent of each other, began to shift to agrarian lifestyle. With the use of farming, 50 to 100 times as many people could live in the same area. This increased source of energy allowed greater complexities in human society with denser populations. This stimulated collective learning and innovation with more people exchanging ideas, allowing more advanced and specialized professions, such as metalsmithing, to emerge. In most areas of the world, one of the key crops that was domesticated was a grain which would quickly become a new foundation to the human diet. Initially ground and eaten as a gruel, eventually evolved into bread, a cheap staple food that would fill stomachs and build empires. So now, on our quest to rebuild civilization from scratch, probably one of the most crucial building blocks will be some bread. So I've been spending time growing many of the grains humanity has used. Wheat, rye, barley, oats, sorghum, corn, and buckwheat even an attempt at rice, despite not having a long enough growing season to grow it outdoors in Minnesota. So now I should have a good bank of a variety of grains for upcoming projects. Now let's make some bread, but first we'll need some special tools. A sickle to help harvest some of my grains, a chisel and a mallet to help shape some stones, specifically to make a corn stone, which we use to grind the grains up. Then some baskets to hold all the grain and flour and an oven to bake the bread. First word from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends is a new mobile RPG game from the team at Polarium. It's an immersive game which is easy to play for five minutes or five hours, depending on what you got going on in your day. In the game, you assemble your crew and head into battle. Each victory wins you more silver and opportunities to strengthen your champions or add new ones. The game is really fun to play, has amazing graphics, and a ton of different battles and campaigns to choose from. Plus, it has a really helpful automated feature so you can focus on building your clan, but let them do all the fighting themselves. The game also has big plans for updates in the next six months. You can check them out on the roadmap, a whole new faction, tag team arena feature, and a new clan box you'll be able to fight. Help out our channel and download the game now for free at the link below in the description. If you use our link, you'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. For some help making a Bronze Age era sickle, I got some help from Greg, the sword casting guy, who was in town this summer and we filmed a few upcoming casting segments with while he was here. All right, I'm back with Greg, the sword caster, and previously cast a few swords, but next I have some grain that I want to harvest. Ah. Can you help me out with making a sickle? As a matter of fact, I can. So wheat is, uh, is coming right out of the Bronze Age, and the early Bronze Age, they would have been harvesting with something like this. So this is a stone tool that they would have made, and farmers during the early Bronze Age would have been using this because they didn't have bronze. Like during the early Bronze Age, most of the military thing. So um, farmers were making tools like this, and you can see where they get the idea because it looks a lot like an animal jawbone. And you can use that for cutting wheat like you're gonna do. And these are found kind of all over the world. This particular design is from Mesopotamia, but they uh, were using these like in the Pacific Islands, they would use shark's teeth in the same way. That's early Bronze Age. By the later Bronze Age, some farmers, if they're lucky, were able to have things like this. This would have been attached to a handle, would be about out to here like that. They would have just uh, put it on the top and then wrapped some, uh, some leather around it, a couple of rivets to go through there to kind of secure it and the handle's only about that long. So they'd hold it like that, and you'd just go like chopping. Did it mostly. Has kind of a funky little edge in there. That's all right, kind of cute. And just like that, we stole their technology. <laughs> this is great. I just love that color. That's yeah. cool. That's not, that doesn't happen every time. I'm not sure what to say about that. Thank you to Greg. You'll be seeing him in a few upcoming videos where he helps with the casting of a few other items. Greg is a sword casting teacher who travels the country teaching group classes. And if you want him to come to you, just shoot him a message at his website, swordcastingguy.com.
Now with a sickle, I can harvest some of my grain. So me and Andy collected some cattails during the summer and have let them dry since then. That's good because it means when I leave a basket with them, there won't be a lot of shrinkage and I won't get gaps for the flower to fall through. But that's bad because the dry cattail doesn't want to bend. When If I tried to weave with this, I just get a bunch of snaps. So I've soaked the cattail for about an hour in water, which gives me a piece that won't shrink when I weave with it, but is also pliable enough that I can make a basket. Next, Cassie needs chisel and hammer. My first attempt with a clay mold failed, but was a bit more successful using sand. This is the leftover elm tree from what we cut down for the bow. We're gonna repurpose some of it by making a handle for this hammerhead that Andy made me. Bill. Hey. All right, so I'm gonna turn this rock into a saddle cart. To do that, I just need to hollow out a little dip in it along this way, which will help collect the flour as we grind it. While Annalise prepped the cornstone, I started processing of some of the harvested wheat by threshing it, by beating it with a stick.
now to grind it and make some bread. The first forms of bread were just baked flatbreads, made without any rising or leavening agent, which Annalise is gonna make by using some of the ground flour and some honey I've harvested before. So I'm gonna eat what people ate before we had bread to kind of show why the logical next step in food was bread. We have wheat berries. I can crack that with my teeth, but it takes some work. So humans ground it up into flour, mixed it with water and maybe honey if they had access to it to make a kind of porridge. It's kind of like oatmeal. Pretty bland, it's really only getting flavor from the honey. So I can see why something like this would be flattened and then baked into flatbread. You can just kind of like throw them in there. Stick this one on the side. They have a ways to go. Won't die. Very hot. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing. I don't like that. I have the two breads that I kind of cooked more in the ashes that I already bit into, and they were pretty good. So I figured I'd test the two that I cooked more on the rock, but ended up finishing off in the fire anyways, just because it was taking quite a while. This one is the one sweetened with honey, and this one is just water and wheat flour. So we'll start with this one, and just take so a look at the inside of it. It's kind of like unflavored pizza crust. It's good. It's bread. And it's warm, which is right now the most important factor to me. <laughs> I'd eat it, like casually. It's a good snack. It definitely fill you up when your main concern with food was filling you up. That's pretty good. Yeast was a later development whose origin isn't entirely known for sure. But as wild yeast is present nearly everywhere, it's easy to imagine it getting accidentally discovered at some point. The invention of leavened bread and brewed beer share the same ingredients and rough dates of origin. It's hard to say with much certainty which came first and which led to the other. But we'll be exploring some potential accidental beer making in the future with some of my other grains soon. Either way, bread leavened with yeast began being made in Egypt by 4000 BCE and quickly became the standard in many parts of the world. For my yeast, I made a batch of watery flour and left it out near our tomato plants. Yeast are attracted to sugary plants, like tomatoes, so it should be a ripe area to collect some. After a few hours of exposure, I brought it inside to cultivate for the next few days somewhere warm and continue to feed it additional flour as we go. Check it out. Oh, look at that! All right, so I got the freshly ground flour and the yeast culture that's been cultivating. Got some water, got some honey. Let's make some Egyptian bread. Can I get a gluten? <laughs> After kneading the dough, it's left to rise for an hour. Then knead it again left to rise once more. But to truly bake bread, we're gonna need an oven. Using our Minnesota winterproof mobile lawn, patent pending, we built a stone foundation, covered the interior shape of the oven in sand, and then used a material called cob, which is made from combining clay, sand, and straw. In our case, leftover straw from all the grains we harvested. After drying and hardening, the sand is scooped out and the oven is ready to be heated up by transferring in some coals. Wait, put this on. There's a monster in our 
oven. Once hot, we left the bread to cook for a little over an hour, occasionally checking on its progress. I'm back in. While we wait for the bread to bake, let's dwell on some of the negative implications of this innovation we just made. Bread makes you fat? Well, the surplus of food was great for building civilizations and advancing technological development to the average individual themselves, it was a different case. Archaeological evidence suggests that the switch to agriculture was generally a negative one to a person's life. With evidence of declining living standards, extra stress on bones from repetitive labor, and people overall usually getting shorter. Some theories suggest agriculture became dominant by people falling into a trap of sedentism. It's believed that it wasn't until global climate change at around 10,000 BCE that stable long-term agriculture became viable, and once a tribe settled into farming, their population would quickly grow too big to ever return to hunting and gathering, and they'd be forced to farm more and more to feed everyone. Then, as history progressed, agricultural societies merely outgrew non-agrarian societies, and whenever conflict would arise, they usually had superior numbers to push them out causing agriculture to quickly spread around the world. Anyways, my bread should be done now. Wow, that's actually really good. That is some good bread. Mouth noises. Mm -hmm. Turned out pretty nice. So, if you wanted to make this bread yourself, how long would it take and how much would it cost? The answer for that is it would take 71 and a half hours to raise your own crops, make the tools to harvest them, make your own grinding stone, grind it, capture your own yeast, and then bake it into actual bread. At minimum wage, that's $572. But for one loaf, that's only 286. That's not a bad deal. So overall, very interesting process. You don't really think about the grinding, the grain, which without a modern mill, it is pretty hard to do. Making the stones pretty time consuming. I don't actually know myself because I'd at least do that, but uh, it looked really hard to watch her do that. Uh, just going through the whole process, Process, you can definitely tell how improvements to this were made along the way. The berries of the wheat itself, not very edible, but they're very hard. So grind them up into a gruel, it's okay. I think you bake it into a small little flatbread, pretty good. You can totally see how you could just accidentally leave it out and capture some yeast, and then that'll turn it into something that's a lot more alive and a lot more spongy. Overall, a lot more pleasant to eat. You can kind of tell it's kind of an accidental evolution that happened along the way. So we've made bread, and bread's basically the building block of civilization, and then the thing that kind of just destroys civilization, the other by product of this, booze. The cause and solution to all life's problems. It's not really known if beer came before bread or at what point, but pretty obvious to see how you can get that. We got this little culture of yeast. Gonna let this guy sit a little bit longer and see if we get some beer, just to forget about it. Also follow some like 6,000 year old recipes as well. Made a few tools specific for this episode, but our next episode, we're gonna make a whole new batch of bronze tools, revisit kind of how we did the melting of it with a little bit more efficient and more modern method that uh, was used a little bit later into the Bronze Age. Keep moving along in the future. Now we have bread, the building block for civilization. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. So if you want to see more of our content, consider supporting us. Any amount really helps. Don't forget to ring the bell. Thank you and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.